Welcome. Thanks for watching this dairy video brought to you by Dairy Xnet. In this video, Dr. Dave Van Meter joins us to discuss bovine foot rot and digital dermatitis. If you'd like alerts on new articles, videos, and resources, be sure to check out the video description below to follow us on Facebook and Twitter or sign up for our newsletter. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Today's presenter, Dr. Van Meter, is a professor in the Animal Population Health Institute at Colorado State University. Dr. Van Meter received his DVM degree from Cornell University in 1989 and completed a residency in food animal medicine at the University of California at Davis in 1993. He was a faculty member in the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University prior to starting at Colorado State in late 1999. Dr. Van Meter's research interests include clostridial diseases of ruminants, bilingual livestock worker training, and livestock disease surveillance. Well, hello everyone. This is Dr. Dave Van Meter. I'm an extension veterinarian at Colorado State University, and I'm going to talk to you today about some common causes of lameness in dairy cattle, specifically foot rot and digital dermatitis. We'll start with a brief introduction of some anatomic terms to make sure we're all on the same page. And then for each disease, we're going to describe why the disease develops as much as we know about that, how can we treat it, and then how, what measures can we take to, uh, to prevent it. So let's start with some anatomy. Okay, when we talk about the bovine foot, we're talking about both of the digits of the cloven hoofed animal. And the coronary band or coronet uh, marks the junction on the left there, marks the junction of the hard hoof, uh, or also known as claw, with the soft supple haired skin that lies above or proximal to the coronary band. And the dew claws are those little nubbins of horn that stick out from the back of the fetlock or ankle area. When we look at the solar surface here, we've got the toe uh, at the front, the heel at the back, obviously, and then the interdigital space is simply the cleft between the two uh, hooves. Now, those dew claws are very useful from a clinical perspective when evaluating cows for, for lameness. These dew claws are not tightly tethered to the underlying bone. They're sort of uh, loosely attached in the soft tissue uh, and the subcutaneous tissues, okay? And so if the foot begins to swell above the level of the hoof, those dew claws tend to spread farther apart on the affected foot, okay? As shown here in this, obviously, uh, cow's lame on the uh, right hind. Okay, so standing behind the animal, one of the first questions at a safe distance, of course, one of the first questions I ask is, can I see a difference in the amount of spread between the dew claws of all four feet? And if I see that the dew claws are spread apart on a given digit or a given foot, that tells me that I've got a disease that is characterized by generalized swelling. And foot rot, which we'll talk about later, is a very common cause of generalized swelling of the digit. Contrast that to what we'll talk about with digital dermatitis or hairy heel warts, where we typically do not see generalized swelling of the foot. Here are some examples. Uh, sorry about the granularity of the image on the left, but that bull was brought in. You can actually see at the top of the image some uh, atrophy of the gluteal muscles. This bull had been lame for a couple of weeks to get that amount of atrophy, but even with the black mat sort of hiding the, uh, the uh, details of the foot, you can see that the right hind limb, the dew claws are spread further apart. So one of the differential diagnoses for a swollen foot is foot rot, and we'll talk about how we can uh, ascertain that more carefully later on. And in the rotary shoot, again, I apologize uh, for the lack of clarity in that image, but you can see that the, the, the uh, digit on the left side has dew claws that are uh, pushed farther apart. Now this cow tends to, it happens to be lame on her left hind uh, limb, but you see no difference in the spread or very little difference in the degree of dew claw spread. Some of that difference is because the uh, left side is a slightly uh, oblique angle, but those, those dew claws are roughly similar in their spread. And so 
when I see a lame cow and I see no evidence of digital swelling, I start thinking about things like digital dermatitis, subsolar abscesses, sole ulcers, things that in their typical uncomplicated state do not tend to cause generalized swelling. So you can just categorize lamenesses uh, by whether or not you uh, see that swelling. Speaking of, let's go ahead and talk about bovine foot rot or BFR. It goes by a variety of names uh, over in the United Kingdom. They often call it foul of the foot. Scientific articles will often refer to it as interdigital necrobacillosis. Uh, phlegmon is, a, is an older term. And this is a very characteristically malodorous bacterial infection of the skin of the interdigital space. And it very reliably causes swelling to be evident uh, by that dew claw spread we talked about previously. How does bovine foot rot develop? Well, the causative bacteria is a bacteria called Fusobacterium necrophorum, and it is present in the gastrointestinal tract and feces of all cattle. So it is a very ubiquitous organism. Wherever you find cattle, you are gonna find this bacteria, okay? So this isn't something that we can exclude from an operation. Okay. Early studies, when we started to isolate this particular organism from bovine foot rot, early studies indicated that if you just placed the bacteria on intact skin, you couldn't recreate the disease. What you had to do was you had to damage the skin. You had to abrade it or make it macerated, chronically wet for the organism to take hold and start the infection. And so understanding that is very important to understanding prevention because obviously in wet, muddy conditions, chronic exposure to wet, muddy conditions, that, that's not always you know, something we can, we can avoid, but we have to recognize it for what it is. It's a very important risk factor for the development of this disease. Okay, so pens that with poor slope that uh, don't drain well, pasture congregation spots where a lot of feces and urine tend to be eliminated. Those are areas where the cattle are gonna stand and they're going to get eventual wetness, eventual um, unhygienic conditions that lead to establishment of the bacteria in the damaged skin, okay? Uh, in this part of the country, we see it a lot of times when cattle are turned out onto particular pastures that have low-lying cactus, okay? And so the trauma occurs by the cactus spines and the ubiquitous uh, bacteria that's present in all cattle feces then causes the, um, the disease to occur. It doesn't appear to be contagious. You can see outbreaks of it. And there's some evidence to suggest that, one, that a badly affected cow might spread it to others. But more often when we see outbreaks, what it is signaling to us is that a large number of cattle are being exposed to uh, risk factors like muddy environments, poor environmental hygiene, um, doesn't tend to just spread through a, a population like wildfire. Interestingly, we see most of those uh, cases in the first month postpartum. We think that's due to the uh, stress of calving and lactation, the physiologic stress that puts on the animal and its immune system. Uh, there's also some possibilities, hey, you know, maybe we manage our fresh cows in a little bit more intensive environments than our dry cows. Okay, so there's some possible environmental factors there as well. If a cow gets foot rot and you treat her and she recovers, um, she can get it again. So there is no immunity from having um, a prior case of this disease. The diagnosis, it's typically an acute, so sudden onset of fairly severe lameness. Now, if you catch it extremely early, you may not see much swelling, but the typical case is one within hours of the onset, we start to see a swollen foot. Um, the animal's very, very sensitive to having it touched, so you may have to use appropriate restraint and even local anesthesia to get a good examination. But you spread the toes gently apart, as we're doing there on the right, and you see the deep, dark clefts in the interdigital space that are malodorous and wet. The discharge is very, very stinky, and typically it's clear to a light brown in color. And because bovine foot rot is an infection of the interdigital skin, since the interdigital skin, by definition, is on the axial midline of the limb, the swelling is symmetrical. If you were to draw this uh, imaginary yellow line down in the middle 
of the foot, the swelling is symmetrical on each side of that midline. That's a very important characteristic of bowline foot rot. So in this slide, you can see on the left, if we draw that imaginary line down, you can see there's obvious swelling and you can kind of make out a hint of a cleft and fissure formation in between those digits. But the image on the left shows a fairly symmetrically swollen foot. Okay, so when viewed, when viewed from behind, the dew claws on this limb would be spread further apart than on other limbs. Okay? This other case on the right, that is an asymmetrically swollen foot. Okay? That's not characteristic of foot rot. Um, this is actually an animal that stepped on a nail and got a puncture wound that went all the way down to the digital bone. For treatment, um, there's a variety of injectable antibiotics. Um, not a lot of evidence to support combining one antibiotic together with another one. Um, and these are just the antibiotics listed here are the ones that uh, I most commonly um, use. There are others that are available for use. Um, certainly veterinarians have different opinions about um, which is uh, superior, okay? Most of the time what you're gonna want is at least three and possibly five days of treatment in, in most cases. And you expect most cows, if they're gonna respond appropriately to your treatment, you expect those cows to be sound, in my experience, within about a week. Um, applying topical antibiotics doesn't really get at the deep uh, part of the infection in the skin. So you may be knocking some of the organisms off with topical therapy, but you really need systemic antibiotics to make a difference in this disease. Topical therapy alone is just not going to, uh, to work. Um, if you are an organic dairy, you've got to catch this early because to, for the cow to stay in the organic herd, obviously you can't use systemic antimicrobial. So you have to be very diligent in catching this disease early and trying to get the infection stopped with topical iodine before the bacteria cleave into the deeper parts of the uh, interdigital space where topical therapy won't get them. Okay. Analgesics, flamixin, meglamine, or aspirin um, are often appropriate for these animals because of the severity of their pain. It's very important to understand that in this di the diagram here, we see interdigital necrobacillosis or foot rot as depicted in the center there by that sort of granular uh, lesion and it's appropriately diagrammed as being something that's very deep underneath the skin. So topical therapy, imagine placing topical therapy onto that lesion, you're just going to get the surface bacteria. You're not going to get the deep ones. And what's problematic about foot rot is if it's left untreated, those deeper bacteria can start to migrate and enter places like the coffin joint, okay, or the bones of the digit as shown in this diagram. And that leads to a very severe condition called deep sepsis of the digit. Deep Sepsis implies that structures deep to the skin, deep to the sub subcutaneous space, bones, ligaments, tendons, joints, etc., have become infected. Okay? When bovine foot rot is left untreated and it does develop deep sepsis, when you look at those animals, they will be severely lean. They will have dew claw spread in the affected limb, but notice how asymmetric the swelling is. Okay, deep sepsis is an asymmetric swelling of the foot. Foot rot is a symmetric swelling of the foot, okay? So if you see asymmetric swelling, you're probably not gonna be correct if you diagnose it as foot rot. You need to talk to your veterinarian about um, other ways to possibly treat that case. Uh, antibiotics alone often aren't effective. We have to talk about things like um, uh, curating away the infected bone or possibly amputating the digit. So obviously we want to get the cases before they become this advanced. So I would like to say that for bovine foot rot, the B implies beneath environmental hygiene. It's, what ben it's what's beneath the animal that's important. We've got to do our best to maintain good slope and good drainage so that we don't have those animals standing 24-7 in wet, muddy, slurry, and manure. Okay, easier said than done in, in you know, certain seasons, but we gotta do our best. Uh, there is a nutritional component of this disease, adequate nutrition for healthy, resilient skin, paying particular attention to these um, four micronutrients. 
Foot baths can help to uh, reduce the bacterial count on the digits, but if you think about it, if they're standing in mud and you foot bathe them, they go back to standing in mud again, your foot bath is probably you know, only reducing the bacterial counts for a transient period of time. There is a vaccine for the organism out there, but it is not effective in preventing this disease. And again, uh, immunity does not seem to occur. So these cases can recur um, over a, a cow's lifetime, okay? Early intervention is key. And then if you're treating for foot rot, you expect the antibiotic therapy to be effective. Um, and certainly if they go, in my, in my rule of thumb, if they go a week after a foot rot diagnosis and they're still lame, you probably ought to get them on the list for the veterinarian to examine because it may not be foot rot or it may not be foot rot anymore. It might have developed into something like deep sepsis. Out in pasture, the same principles apply. It's just a little bit harder to apply them. You want to look at areas where cattle congregate, like shaded areas, and you want to see if you can slope those, see if you can get them drained, and if you can't, at least make conditions underfoot optimal so that the animal's interdigital skin does not get injured. So removing sticks, sharp objects, knocking cactus down, dragging and harrowing, those sorts of things to spread the manure out are ways that we can manage foot rot in a, in a pastured setting as far as trying to manage the environment. Moving on to digital dermatitis. This is also it's a disease also known as hairy heel warts and some of the earlier literature called it papillomatous digital dermatitis and that word papillomatous applies to the tendency for these to look almost wart-like in the advanced state. Um, most surveys are indicating that this has become the leading cause of lameness in dairy cattle worldwide. Certainly foot rot is, a, is an important cause, but digital dermatitis seems to be the most predominant cause. And this is actually a contagious disease. So one animal can spread it to another, unlike foot rot, where the bacteria is ubiquitous and it's environmental conditions that seem to be the key trigger. This is actually a contagious disease. But what's interesting here is this appears to be a contagious disease that's not caused by one bacteria, but by groups of bacteria, many of which we have yet to fully characterize because we can't isolate them well in the laboratory. Over time, as digital dermatitis uh, sets in, you tend to be able to isolate a uh, species of bacteria called treponema, and its image is there in the center. It's a spiral-shaped bacteria, and those are also called spirochetes as a, as a group of bacteria. But we know that treponema alone um, is not uh, the uh, sole agent. If you take these treponema and you isolate them, you apply them to a digit, you will not see the disease. So it's a, it's a concoction, it's an amalgamation of bacteria, um, many of which remain to be fully identified. The typical location, as, uh, as implied by heel, is at the back of the foot, often in that interdigital space just above the heels. We occasionally will get one off to one side or the other, but it's usually right there on midline. This disease does not tend to invade into the deeper tissues like bovine foot rot, so you don't tend to see that generalized swelling. Notice you can see those dew claws up there, and they look pretty settled in the tissue. They're not spread apart relative to the, uh, to the other limbs. The uh, early lesion often looks like the surface of a, of a strawberry, but over time, it tends to develop into more of a proliferative type of lesion, hence the name hairy hairy heel wart, okay? There's large fronds of proliferative uh, infected skin that make it look hair-like. Um, there's no foul odor and no generalized swelling like we would expect with foot rot in most cases. We tend to see digital dermatitis more commonly on the rear legs than the front, and that suggests that they're um, being exposed to manure for greater periods of time as they lay in, in free stalls, um, lay down really anywhere if you think about it, uh, um, just because the way the, the limbs are positioned, the front feet, the heels tend to be uh, pointed upward and the hind legs, they tend to be pointed downward when cattle lay down. There's also shorter heels behind feet and that may predispose these animals to get that inoculum up into that uh, interdigital skin at the heel. Now, this is a really interesting disease because as we study it, we begin to realize that it takes a long time for these lesions to develop. The average time from uh, the 
visible lesion in a field study to the onset of lameness was four months. Okay? So these lesions are slowly developing in cattle, but the ones that get those bigger, more proliferative uh, lesions are the ones that tend to break with lameness. As for foot rot, we think that poor hygiene and wet conditions is, is conducive to digital dermatitis. Um, you can certainly introduce it into a dairy by, by not quarantining new animals. So my goodness, if you don't have digital dermatitis, congratulations. Quarantine animals um, and treat their feet appropriately. We'll talk about that here in a moment to keep it off of your farm, okay? Because once on a farm, it is very, very difficult to completely eradicate it. Right. We also know that inanimate objects, what are called fomites, like hoof trimming equipment, heaven forbid, dirty boots from a veterinarian that doesn't uh, change his boots or clean his boots as he or she goes from one place to the other, entirely plausible that that could bring the, uh, the disease on as well. So good, solid biosecurity is a very important part of excluding digital dermatitis. Treatment. If you don't have many cases, you can isolate affected cows because again, it is contagious. It behaves like a contagious disease. Now, if you've got, you know, 20% of the herd in involved, isolating that number of animals is often not practical. Okay, treatment, um, fortunately, treatment is usually fairly successful. We don't have to go with systemic antibiotics, unlike foot rot, okay? A topical antibiotic or antiseptic applied under a light bandage will actually kill that slurry of bacteria and the uh, lameness tends to go away fairly quickly within a day or two, okay? As the animals are experiencing this pain, you can use flinixin, megalamine, or aspen as an adjunct for analgesia. When you catch them early, a lot of times they'll be sound the following day after application of topical uh, antibiotics alone or disinfectants or, or salves, okay? A treated lesion uh, becomes less painful, it turns black and it scabs over, but more than half of them will come back and recur. So again, this is a weird disease. We usually think of infectious diseases as, as, as causing animals to mount an immune response. But these two diseases we're talking about, folks, part of the reason they're so common is cattle cannot mount an effective immune response uh, to, these, uh, to these different agents. So you can have a treated lesion that you know, days, weeks later, flares back up again. You didn't do anything wrong. It's just the nature of the game. For organic dairies, uh, topical antibiotics are not allowed. Certainly, systemic. If we have to use them, then that cow has to be pulled from the organic string. Copper sulfate powder under a bandage has been used successfully for digital dermatitis. Uh, different oils, iodine mixed together to sort of form ointments work well, and then aspirin and flumix and make. Megalamine are allowed for those particularly painful animals. Just take note as an organic operation, you will have to uh, carry a 2x withhold for flinix in use um, um, as per organic regulations. Now, prevention of digital dermatitis, there's a lot of different strategies here. If you're getting a flare up and you're seeing a lot of cases, it may be time to consider spraying the heels of the animals. Um, in the parlor. We have to do this very carefully. We can use any number of topical solutions, antiseptics, uh, even antibiotic solutions. A couple things. One, make sure that you know the chemical character of whatever you're applying. Typically, we want to mix that product with um, deionized or distilled water because hard water can inactivate some of these different disinfectants and even some uh, antibiotics. When we spray the heels, we want to make sure we have a very, very fine-tuned sprayer when we do not want to splash it up and get it onto the utter skin where it could potentially get into the uh, underneath the teat cup and cause, um, cause a, a residue concern. Um, a lot of people, what they're doing, because there's a tendency for digital dermatitis outbreaks to be more common in younger animals, um, some folks will go ahead and gather their pregnant heifers and We'll gather them up in head catches if possible in a recently flushed uh, corral so that the feet are relatively clean and they'll spray the heels of those pregnant heifers and try to get ahead of the disease in those younger animals with that uh, method. Uh, but again, if we spray in the parlor, we've got to make super sure we're not getting that uh, compound up onto the teats. 
Uh, there's a variety of different foot baths. At the end of this presentation, I'll give you one of the best chapters I think ever written about foot baths. Foot baths for digital dermatitis control are very commonly used. Um, the most common compounds you used are copper sulfate and formalin. Um, there are environmental concerns and local regulations do apply to some of those products. So make sure that you talk to your extension agents about what is um, safe for use in your particular area. Um, foot baths can cause problems with slipping. Um, they can be hard to manage in uh, cold conditions. So sometimes you have to use them uh, sporadically and, and change your methods of control to say heel sprays uh, when conditions outside are conducive to ice formation. Prevention, understanding digital dermatitis, it's a complex disease. It's polybacterial, meaning there are multiple bacteria involved. And even though we always say treponema eventually becomes a predominant strain, it's not the only one, okay? We know that vaccines that uh, use the sole isolates of trep treponema have not been effective in preventing digital dermatitis. We have to understand that it's contagious, so we don't want to spread it. So clean tools, hoof knives, boots uh, between premises, clean coveralls between premises. If we're uh, hauling hoof trimming equipment from one premises to the other, running it through a car wash and really scouring it and getting it super clean is a very, very good idea. Resources, uh, colleagues at Iowa State have done a fantastic job with research. Paul Plummer and uh, Dr. Kroll have done a great job with um, research on digital dermatitis, and they've written a very uh, up-to-date summative article in this uh, Veterinary Clinics of North America. Um, and then Nigel Cook did a great job summarizing all of the different research on foot baths. So everything you would need to know about foot baths is definitely going to be found in that, in that chapter. Um, and you can uh, go ahead and order uh, specific chapters from these back issues at the website listed here. So I hope this overview has been helpful for you. Um, certainly uh, feel free to contact me. Uh, you can find me on the internet if you have any questions or concerns or anything else. Uh, certainly let me know what you think of the presentation, good, bad, or otherwise. And I wish you a good day, and thank you very much for listening.